Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the best results when laser cutting or engraving leather. So I have broken this video down into four main sections. They are leather selection and preparation, settings for non-proof grade leather, finishing techniques, and we're gonna finish the video up with some handy tips. So getting started with leather selection. Now, my preferred choice of leather in the workshop is veg tanned, so this is what the video is gonna be focusing on. Now, I like to use finished hides as they are pre-colored, so that way I can save time, but it also means that each piece is gonna have a more consistent look to it. Another thing to take into account on leather selection is the color. So if you are gonna be engraving on your design, then this will show up more on a lighter colored leather and be more subtle on darker leathers. So that is something to note when choosing the leather you want for your project. Now, depending on what you're applying to make, you need to choose the thickness of your leather. And now the majority of, of my projects, I am using 1.5 millimeter thick leather, but you can go thicker than that. When it comes to the actual laser process, you have the option to mask your leather. Now, this is what I am choosing to do as it protects the leather from soot and charring from the lasering process. I have an example here for you for the same design where one has been masked and the other one hasn't, so you can see the differences for yourself. Now, these results will vary from hide to hide as well as what it is you are marking onto your leather. So if you are worried at all, it is best to do a quick test piece first to make sure you are getting the results that you want. For the masking, I am actually using some brown paper tape that I use for packing my orders and I have found that this works really well. Now, when it comes to the settings, this will vary on the machine that you are using and the thickness on, of your chosen leather. So I use a Glowforge Pro, which is a 45 watt CO2 laser, and I got to the settings that I use by using the built-in settings from the proof grade leather as a starting point. Now, if you are interested in buying a Glowforge like what I have here in the workshop, there is a referral code in the description where you can get up to $500 or equivalent off a machine. Now, when I'm using one point five millimeter leather, this lies between the medium and the thick proof grade levers, which when turned into millimeters are about 1.2 and 2.3 millimeters thick. So the thick proof grade settings are a speed of 168 and a power of 100, and the medium proof grade settings are a speed of 246 and a power of 81. So I started with the medium settings and then I bumped these up a bit as my 1.5mm leather is slightly thicker and through my testings, my settings of choice for the thickness is a speed of 203 and a power of 85. Now there can be variations of thickness within the hides, but for the most part these are the settings that I have used and they work brilliantly. Now for my thicker 2 to 2.5mm leather, I used the thick proof grade settings and these work absolutely fine. For the engraving, I stuck with the default settings of 1000 speed and 71 power of the standard graphic, and these look great. Now for a deeper engraver, you can use the HD settings and they work really good as well. But now we have our leather prepared and our settings dialed in, we can now cut and engrave our piece and move on to some finishing techniques. Now, once my piece has finished in the machine, the first thing I'm gonna do before removing any of the masking is to use some sandpaper and remove all of this soot off of the edges. And this is gonna get us the best results and it will also help reduce the smell a bit. But at the end of the day, we did just burn skin to get this cut out, so there will be a bit of a smell for a while. Once the edges have been sanded, if there was any engraving, we can use a toothbrush and remove any soot from there. Now I have seen some people using soapy water to remove the soot, which should be fine, but just be aware that on lighter leather, you can get watermarks. So I would do a test on your chosen piece of leather first and make sure that your piece is allowed to dry naturally. We can now remove the masking and using some natural leather care, we can rub this top surface to get it looking its best. Now, the best leather care products that I like to use are the natural ones, and these are gonna include things like beeswax and tallow. And for me, the one that I like the best is the Sedwich Leather Care, but there is also the Metropolitan Leather, Traditional Leather Feed, as well as Smith Leather Balm, which are also all natural. Now, you can go on and do your edging and staining of the edges, should you wish. And one thing to note that if you are using a lighter color leather, then these edges are gonna be darker than if you cut it out with a nice due to the lasering process. Now, this might not be an issue for you, but it is something to be aware of. I personally don't mind, and it gives more of a contrast to the edges, but again, this will be down to you, um, but it is something that you need to think about. 
once your item has been assembled, you can go ahead and use sandpaper once again on the edges to get them nice and flush, and then restain and finish your item. To get the best possible edge, I like to put some Tulkanol on mine, which gives a lovely, nice, shiny finish to the edge. Before I finish this video, I want to go over a few useful tips when lasering leather. The first one is if you are going to be creating stitching holes in your pieces. Now I will be doing a separate video on how to create slanted stitch holes, but this applies to the circular holes as well. And that is that you are going to be unable to clean the sit out from in between the holes, and this may affect the colour of your threads. Now, if you are going to be using a dark coloured thread, you won't see much of a difference. But if you are using a lighter colour thread, then this will become darker over the length of your stitching as it picks up more soot as you go along. Now, this mostly affects linen thread from what I can see, but there is something that you need to be aware of when choosing the colours of your thread. Another tip is that when you are setting your files up for lasering is to make sure that any stitch holes or cut out are made first and the final step will be to cut out the actual piece. This is because the leather can pop up or curl up at the edges so we want all the other bits done first so we get the best results. So I think that is everything so if you have any questions regarding lasering leather then please leave a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I will see you in the next video.